Hey everyone, welcome back to the much-awaited anamorphic depth of field tutorial. Ever since I posted my tribute to Halo video a few weeks ago, there's been a few of you who've asked me about it. You know, one or two of you. I'm not gonna lie, I've been extremely reluctant to post this video. At all. There's a few reasons for it, it's because I am not super happy with this solution. It works. But it's very hacky. It holds together with duct tape. Okay, so there, there's some pretty major sacrifices you need to make in order for get, to get this to work. The first of which involves sacrificing 50% of your resolution, or you need two times as much graphics processing power to get this out without losing any resolution. So if you're already pushing your graphics card to its absolute limit, trying to get your renders out in 4K, you're going to need to render an 8K in order to not lose resolution, and that's just not an option for a lot of people out there. Even with an RTX 3090, you're going to have a hard time rendering some complex shots in 8K. That's a lot of pixels. There's a lot of data to move there. So in my case, I rendered in 4K and sacrificed 50% of my resolution when using this method. I just want to make you painfully aware of this before we move on. So the second reason I've been on the fence about making this video at all is because it involves the use of a plugin. And that plugin is called Fantastic Perspective, and it's not free. It costs about $20, so it's a little bit on the expensive side of plugins in Unreal. And on top of that, that this plugin is not even made for Anamorphic Depth of Field. It's not a magical plugin that just makes your depth of field better. It is intended for people in architecture who want some perspective correction with the help of a tilt shift lens, okay? I already own this plugin because I had an ArchViz client and that needed perspective correction. So when I saw some of the settings in this plugin, things kind of clicked and hey, there's potential here. So I just want to be totally clear with you guys, this video is not sponsored. This is just the only way I've found to get anamorphic depth of field out of Unreal Engine, okay? I just want to be completely transparent here. This may not be the magical solution that a lot of you are probably expecting, okay? There, like I said, there's a major drawback to using this method. You need to be the judge here and ask yourself if this is the right method for you. So I just want to be clear in this introduction, this is not a great solution. It works, it was good enough for my own personal needs, but it may not be a solution for everyone. So take what I'm about to show you with a major grain of salt because I don't want to disappoint you, okay? So I'm lowering your expectations as much as I possibly can here just because I know that some people are probably going to be pretty upset about the way that I did this. So now that we've gotten all that crap out of the way, what are we waiting for? Let's jump in. So the first thing we want to do is you're going to have to go ahead onto the Unreal Marketplace and download the ArchViz Camera Fantastic Perspective plugin. So this plugin costs about you know, $20. It's not cheap. It's not on the cheap end of plugins. There may be other plugins that kind of do what I need it to do. You'll see quite soon how I use this plugin and how we achieve the anamorphic look. So once you've bought that plugin, you've downloaded it, you've added it to your, your engine. So what you need to do now is you enable the plugin. So we're just going to go to settings up here. Plugins, if we type in fantastic, just make sure that your fantastic perspective plugin is enabled. Once you've done that, restart your engine and we'll get started. From here, it is extremely simple to add it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to select our camera. Okay, click your, add, open your sequencer, click on your camera and in the add component tab, we're going to go ahead and click on this and search for fantastic. Right here, it says Fantastic Perspective Manager Component. Click on that, we're gonna add this here, okay? Now you'll see there's a whole bunch of settings. You're gonna wanna click on the Frustrum tab. And in the pre-aspect scale, you're gonna type in two on the Y axis. Now, you're gonna be wondering why the heck am I doing this? What, what is even happening here? You'll see real soon. So I'm going to go ahead and start a render and you're going to see exactly what this is doing. So now I've set up my render in the movie render queue and I'm ready to hit render local and pay attention to how different this shot is going to look when I hit render. You're going to notice everything's kind of squeezed, you know, vertically like this. Now notice, do you guys notice how everything's kind of squished? But notice how the out of focus elements, the round bokeh here, it's still round. It's the whole render is squished, but it's still round. 
Now, maybe you're starting to understand what we're trying to do here, okay? So I'm just gonna skip this long part and I'm gonna bring this render into DaVinci Resolve. And I'm gonna show you exactly what it is I'm doing with this super squished render. So now that we're in DaVinci Resolve, I brought in my render and you'll notice right away that everything's kind of squished, everything, nothing looks very good, it just looks weird. But again, pay attention to the out of focus bokeh here. It is nice and round, despite being squished. And that's where things get interesting. And now that we have our render squished and we know by exactly how much, we're gonna go to the transform tab up here. So click on your clip and the transform tab, in the Y, instead of setting it to one, you're gonna set it to two. And now, no, look at that. Our renders are kind of back to the proper format and our out of, out of focus elements are nice and oval. So it, it, this, is, this is what I mean. It's kind of a hack. It's kind of a really fake trick. Um, this is not truly what anamorphic does. Anamorphic is so much more than just the oval shaped bokeh, right? Um, anyone who's ever worked with cameras understands this, but this kind of gets an interesting look, and this is the look that I felt would benefit my shot, but I actually don't recommend that you do this because what, what is the downside of this right now? So right now I rendered it in 4K, and because I de-squeezed two times vertically, I'm losing like half my resolution vertically. So now I'm actually only have 1080p. My render is, not, is no longer a, a 4K render, it's actually 1080p because I lost half that vertical resolution. Is it good enough? Yeah. Look, zooming into 100% here, it's nice and crisp and sharp. It's in, in fact, in some places it's almost too sharp. This was fine in my case. In my situation, I made a judgment call and I figured, hey, you know what? I think this is good enough. This is totally up to you. You need to make the judgment call here and figure out for yourself if this is good enough for your needs. So just to recap, essentially all I'm doing here to get the out of focus elements to be oval shaped, you render everything squished and you de-squeeze in post. It's really as simple as that. It's a super dumb solution. Now that being said, there is something you can do to not have to sacrifice to 50% 50 of your resolution vertically, okay? So let's jump back into Unreal and I'll show you how. Okay, so now that we're back in Unreal, I'm gonna show you guys one more way that you can get the same kind of effect, the same anamorphic depth of field without sacrificing 50% of your vertical resolution. Now, the main downside of this is that it actually requires you to render double your resolution horizontally, okay? So this is not exactly a feasible option for many of you out there. So for example, in the Halo tribute that I made, this was already rendering in full 4K plus 150% super sampling. Now, the problem is I would not be able to render double the horizontal resolution because my GPU just could not handle it. I'm using a RTX 2060 Super. It is not the best card in the market. It is a great card. I love it. I'm very happy with it, but it would not be able to handle rendering it 8K horizontally, okay? So, so, so just kind of keep that in mind. You begin to understand what the issue is here, right? So either you sacrifice 50% of your resolution or you render twice as wide and that requires twice as much graphic processing power that you may or may not have. If you're, if you're already pushing your graphic card to its limit, rendering in 4K, you're not gonna be able to do this in 8K. It's just gonna crash. You're gonna run out of VRAM. 8K is a stupidly high resolution. I really don't recommend working in 8K just because Unreal, chances are Unreal's gonna crash. Even if you have the big and beefy RTX 3090 with 24 gigs of VRAM, it's 8K is a big resolution, okay? So I'm just gonna show you how you can do it if you have the graphic processing power, all right? So let's go. Let's click on our camera actor and click on the fantastic perspective uh, component that we added earlier. So instead of setting this to two on the Y axis, let's just set this back to one. And we're in the X, we're gonna hit the, the 0.5, okay? So what's, this, what's gonna do is that it's going to squeeze out your render horizontally, okay? So it's just, it's gonna get, Master Chief here is gonna look super fat. Now the next thing you need to do, you also need to change your film back. So clicking on our camera actor here. So what you need to do is you need to set your sensor width. So in my case, it was 34, but you need to double it, okay? So I'm gonna set mine to 68 now. 
And you'll see this creates a nice wide panoramic look. Because what's going to happen? What happens if I leave it at 34? If you squeeze it out now, okay, if Master Chief is squished outwards, uh, your framing is going to be different. You, you need to, to render those extra pixels so that you can squish it back in to get the same framing. So I'm going to set it to 68. Get a nice panoramic view. And then there's one last thing you need to do is you need to change your render resolution. So I'm going to open the movie render queue here. And in output, I need to change its resolution. And I'm going to set the X resolution to 3840. Because 1920 times 2 is 3840, which means I need to render this at 3840 by 1080. It is a very high resolution. It's not a full 4K because it's still 1080p in height. Now, if you if you want to go for a full 4K render, you'd probably have to bump that up to 7680. So this is starting to be very, very big. This is a huge resolution. Now, this is going to be the, roughly the equivalent for an HD render because I don't want to murder my poor little RTX 2060 Super. So once that resolution is done, you're going to hit accept and we're going to render local and see how this looks. So now that we've brought our render our new super wide render back into DaVinci Resolve, what we need to do is basically do the exact same thing that we did last time. So you'll notice now that everything is squished. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the Y axis to two. And this should give you the exact same framing that you had before the scale with the fantastic camera plugin. Okay. So by using this method, we ensure that we don't lose any vertical resolution. We know that we rendered in 1080p. My timeline is in at 1080p. So with contrary to before, we're not losing 50% of our resolution this way. But like I said many times, this comes at the cost of rendering power. If you're already struggling to get your renders out without it Unreal crashing, you're not going to be able to use this method. So just keep that in mind. There's a reason why I went with the lower resolution route for my Halo tribute video that I posted. Okay, I understood that I was already rendering in 4K plus 150% screen percentage, so it was a 50% super sampled. I made a judgment call and I figured it was good enough. Your mileage may vary. I just want to put this out there and be very clear with you guys as to what those caveats are. Now you'll notice uh, Chief here is pretty out of focus, so when you start playing with very wide um, film backs, your depth of field, your focus point may change. So be aware of that, okay? So that's one of the other reasons why I don't really like working with the super wide film back aspect ratio. It's just kind of, rendering can get weird in that respect. As you can see, it's not a super complex thing, but it does have its fair share of inconveniences. There's pros and cons to using this method. I really hope that there's a better solution for it out there. If you know about it, let me know in the comments. I want to hear from you. But as far as I'm concerned, there is no other better way of getting some anamorphic depth of field in your scene. So as I said before, this worked for me and hopefully it can help you out as well. So as always, thanks so much for watching. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.